Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Los Lomas High School uh, right here on Walnut Creek TV. It's going to be the Clayton. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Los Lomas High School uh, right here on Walnut Creek TV. It's going to be the Clayton Valley Eagles against the Los Lomas Knights. I'm Anthony Schultz along with Brooke Kilgore. And, Brooke, a couple of teams undefeated. They met earlier in the season in that tie. But could things be going any better for either one of these clubs this season? I really don't think so, considering they're both undefeated and battling for the top spot in the DFAL. It shows that both of these teams know what they're doing and what it takes to get to this level. They've taken down several amazing teams, and they're here to show what they've got tonight. Season ends here today. Playoffs going to start. We'll have that selection on Sunday to find out where these teams will play. And let's take a look at a couple of players yeah. on the teams. David Gallegos in goal for Clayton Valley and a team that's been very tough to score on. Something that shows that your team is very well-rounded is the fact that your goalie can defend anything that comes his way. Gallegos is showing that he knows how to read that game really well and how to defend any ball that comes from him while also showing that he's a great team player and will be there for his teammates whenever a problem arises. And for Los Lomas, it's Adiel Avador, the center back. And now this back line has played absolutely wonderful. And you want to talk about a team that's not given up any goals. It's this team right here. Brooke, it's been virtually nothing all season. Mm -hmm. Adiel is a, is a center back who is a part of this strong Los Lomas defense, meaning they have only given up four goals this entire season, helping to build that undefeated record and establish themselves as a well-rounded team tonight. Yeah, four goals in 19 games. They've been actually super tough to score on. Of course, the last time two to two. So you figure a low scoring game here tonight. This one is for the DFAL championship. Come on back. We're Walnut Creek TV. We'll have the start of the game in just a moment. Picture looks spectacular. See, it, it seems it seems more clear than usual. And welcome back to Los Lomas. Uh, just about uh, set to get start and started in this game. Los Lomas coming in 18-0-1, 10-0-1 in league. For Clayton Valley, 17-0-2, 9-0-2 in league. And Brooke, as we see the these guys getting ready, um, championship game on hand. Isn't that exciting, just knowing you've come so far undefeated, your only losses are considered ties, 
and you're about to play this crosstown rival to secure your spot in NCS. Either your first seed, second seed. We don't know where they're going to be until Sunday, right. but it's going to be a race to get that higher seed and to play the best teams in the league. Yeah, this is a championship game here tonight to close out this uh, regular season. And uh, we talked about uh, Las Lomas there. You see uh, Guillermo O'Hara, a head coach, and Clayton Valley Charter. And this uh, program obviously doing really, really well right now. And you look at the rest of the, uh, the Diablo Foothill League, it's not exactly like they got a lot of bad teams in here. Uh, YV, 8-4-4. Four, and four. Akalana's 12, 8, and 2. Northgate, 7, 7, and 4. Campolindo and Miramani kind of bringing up the rear. They're struggling. But uh, as far as the Northgate Broncos are concerned, Northgate tied Clayton Valley and actually scored a couple of goals against Los Lomas. So the Broncos, I'm sure, are feeling a little bit frisky. I mean, it's always amazing to say, hey, I took a couple points against these undefeated champions and made them work extra overtime. But it really just comes down to this game. It's putting everything behind them. I talked to... Um, Number four, Adiel Avador, about how his how he's feeling about this game, especially as a captain and leaving tonight. This is his senior night. And he said, it feels amazing to be in our current position, but our job is not finished yet. We want to win NCS, and I personally won't be satisfied until we <laughs> accomplish these goals. Yeah, so much more going on after this, but still, to win, a, to win your league t title, that's that's something to be proud of. It's something to really shoot for. You're you know, talking about all your rivals and everything. A lot of teams that you're playing twice every year. Yeah. Of course you want to beat them. But this is just the, uh, the postseason. We'll find out what's going on ap after Sunday, where these teams will be. And uh, we should be uh, getting this ball game started here in just a few moments right here on Walnut Creek TV. All right, we are just about set for kickoff here. The championship game of the DFAL here in 2023. Just about set to get underway. And let's get this one started from Los Lomas on a chilly night here in Walnut Creek. And even though we're up in the booth, it's still kind of cold. It's cold everywhere. <laughs> it's California in the winter season. And this ball game is underway. And Los Lomas kicking this one into the Clayton end. Clayton in the white with the black trunks and Los Lomas in their burgundy uniforms. And somebody is gonna claim the championship here tonight. And that one goes out of bounds and it's gonna be a, it's like a Los Lomas, actually they're still jousting for it there over on the far side. And this one kicked down the sideline. Los Lomas, 18 wins coming in. This one booted away by the Knights goalie. That is Mickey Darer in goal for Los Lomas tonight. And we talked about that back line, Brooke, uh, for them and not giving up very many goals. you got to figure a goal is going to be at a premium here this evening. 
you can see it, especially with the women's soccer team we last covered, goals were a very rare occasion for many teams. Soccer is mostly just staying in the midfield, trying to get it back and forth between right. players. The time you get it towards the goal is always, you can feel the anticipation rise in the fans, and especially us, because we get to see a goal. So it's always something to look forward to here. Here's Gallegos taking one at the side of the net. Throws out to a teammate here as they get it back to midfield, and now Clayton gets it into the Knights end of the field. Clayton coming in with 17 wins overall. These teams tied back on January the 17th. That was a 2-2 ball game. But they have really dominated the DFA all, all year. And they're talking about how Northgate really, they gotta be feeling pretty good just by scoring against Las Lomas and of course tying Clayton Valley. So even though the Broncos gonna break even overall this year, but uh, still they fared fairly well against the top two teams in the league. Yeah. There's a header there. And this one's going to go out of bounds. And it looks like Clayton is kind of, a, kind of a penalty kick here. I haven't seen him raise a card or anything. Officials kind of talking it over with some of the Los Lomas players, but uh, Clayton going to get a chance to kick this one for midfield. You know, you look at the uh, game log book, and, you know, a lot of times soccer isn't going to be a low scoring game, but. Some of those games with the Knights, I mean, eight to nothing, five to nothing, four to nothing, six to nothing. I mean, they kind of wiped teams out this year. And there's a whistle that stops play. You can tell soccer has become a very dominant field at Los Lomas. I mean, we have the multiple fans out here just cheering for them, going after every ball. It's really amazing to see how much of a community both sides at least have built with this sport. But also Las Lomas has taken that offensive and has taken more points, which is going to tell you a lot about this game. They're going to go, they're going to be aggressive, and there's not going to be a lot of room for error tonight. And looking at some of the statistics for Clayton Valley, they do have a number of players that uh, put up a fair number of goals this year and a fair number of points. Clayton trying to get into the goal, and it's going to be headed away at the last moment. And getting ahead on that was Finn O'Day, the junior. That was, looked like that was going on goal. And here is a nice play in goal from uh, the nice goalie, Darer, making the play there. I mean, we talked about it with our intro today. The defensive line for Las Lomas is strong. Only allowing four goals all season means they know how to move. They know how to communicate, which is something super vital for any defense to have in order to succeed. I mean, gonna have a whistle to stop play here. And it looks like that's gonna go against Las Lomas. So the Eagles are gonna have a chance to uh, kick this one from inside the uh, Las Lomas end of the field here happened a couple of times so far here in the first half. If you look at, uh, you know, Braginski, he's got nine goals, Witten eight, Hara, the coach's son, five, Martin, four. So it's not exactly like every game is ending one to nothing. Oh, no, it's not. And it's amazing to see that each player here gets to shine alongside their teammates, and that's always a really, really amazing thing to see. Well, that was a pretty good-looking boot there by number 10, Marco Hara. Just talked about him and, and his goal. He's got to seven assists to go along with those five goals, but that was a nice catch made by Darer in goal. And that's kind of the, the dangerous time when the ball's coming to a goalie and you don't secure it, you give up that rebound. A lot of times the ball's going back, back the other way if you don't secure the ball. And it's all about reading it too. Those jump shots in the air, you have to make the right decision at the right time to secure that, that possession, that blocking that goal. And if you don't, it could get, give up a point for the other team. Here are the Knights trying to press the action. Kick that forward, but then knocked away. Beautiful defense there. He's talking about a great back line, and there it is right there. And it looked like the Knights had an opportunity there, but they were thwarted. And if I'm seeing that right, I think it's Nolan Martin, number three for Clayton, that knocked that away, and he's going to chase it down here in the corner. You talk about a, team, a back line that knows how to move and knows how to communicate with each other. And for the opposing offense, Brooke, it has to seem like every time you get anywhere near the goal, you're being swarmed <laughs> on by defenders. Someone's just going to come take it from you, and if you're not strong enough to hold your own, yeah. it's gone. It's over. Going back the other way, Clayton looks like the like lost one was kicked that one out of bounds. And Clayton will go chase down the ball. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that was almost a go fetch right there. Look how far <laughs> that ball rolled away. And he's number 22, Marco Tredenick, have decided, forget it, let's just get another ball. 
Sometimes that's the best option. Save the running for the game, not chasing yeah. down the ball. <laughs> Battle for it here on the sideline. And another whistle is going to stop action here, and they're going to call again against Los Lomas. Three times the time the whistle has blown, and they've awarded possession to Clayton Valley on the uh, Los Lomas end of the field. But it's kind of one of those things where it's not what you'd call really a major disadvantage. The student section will agree with that statement <laughs> yeah. right there, Tony. There's Hara again. Boy, bending that one toward the goal. This one is going to go wide left and out of bounds. But certainly able to give that one a nice boot there by Marco. And you can see he has a bit of that curve on it as well. The Bennett like Beckham thing, I guess, oh my right? Goodness. I don't know how they learn how to do that, but I respect them. I respect them. You being can kick a curveball. That's pretty <laughs> tough. All right, here's Mickey Deerer now. He'll boot it away for the Knights. And this one coming into midfield and giving that one. With the head, Haven Salih, number 15, knocks it out of bounds. With our camera crew bearing the elements here tonight. Of course, it could be worse if you're in the Midwest. Yeah. At times it's negative 10 degrees, yeah. so I guess we're doing okay. Add a little snow to your soccer game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Clayton trying to press the action down the far side. We'll go to the middle of the field. And nothing doing there as the Los Lomas back line takes care of this one. And this one's going to be out of bounds. It looks like Clayton will get a throw in here on the near side of the field. A good attempt at a defensive stop, but it just it wasn't working there. And Clayton successfully got that ball, made Los Lomas kick that ball out of bounds. And here they are at a really great spot. Fred Nick going to throw this one in. Guillermo O'Hara of Clayton Valley in his 10th year. Last year they lost in the semis to De La Salle, one to nothing. They did beat Napa and Doherty last year. I mean, well, those are two of the better teams. And so we're always gonna be there at the end. This one going out of bounds as well. But uh, some, quite a bit of success for Guillermo in his tenure. Three league titles, 14, 18, and last year. So trying to make it back to back here. And then of course, as you look at the Eagles sideline, Putting together a very nice program with a nice string of success and of course sending team sending guys to uh, the upper levels to play at uh, four-year schools and junior colleges as well yeah, it's just different to see Clayton Valley in black and white I mm. always thought they didn't they always wear the blue I thought they were they like the USA look, colors they used blue, to a little red, red. yeah, yeah. 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 alright there's Hara and <laughs> he <laughs> kicks this one Kind of missed everything that time, but he kind of spun there and hit that one with the left foot and really gave it a jolt. There's quite a bit of wind out there, so I, I would have to think that the wind might be slightly affecting their play just a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying to look for a flag here. I don't see one. I know. Get a sense of so how the wind is blowing right now. All the way over there behind our scoreboard. I'm more so looking at their jerseys. That's actually a very good indicator of the wind. <laughs> yeah, this one popped up in the air. Nice going on it with the headers. <laughs> Haro working on the sideline and working against Kai Rosenbaum. Out of bounds here to Clayton. So Clayton's been playing the ball here on the Los Lomas side quite a bit here tonight, Brooke. The Knights had one chance that was uh, quickly thwarted by uh, Clayton's Nolan Martin, but that's been it. It's so far pressing the issue offensively has been the Eagles. And then taking a look back at that tied 2-2 game they, that they last had against Clayton Valley, you can see that both teams were not really giving much room to work for either offense or defense. And I mean, if you can't you can't overtake a certain team like Los Lomas had been doing all season, then you can tell this game is going to be kind of a close matchup. Here's a good boot going into the Clayton Valley end. Of course, Los Lomas got to make sure they don't get off sides. And now the Knights trying to press this one. And it's going to be kicked out on the side. And this will be a throw in here for Las Lobos. But that was got the crowd into it here <laughs> below. This is the closest I think we've been in a little while. Eagles and the Knights battling for the DFAL championship here tonight. As we end the 22-23 campaign here. And out of bounds again.
see a good shot of the crowd here tonight. All right, Eagles in the corner, trying to thwart uh, Los Lomas, out of bounds again. Have not seen a corner kick so far here this evening. Knight's gonna throw it in here from the near side. And that one going toward the goal and quickly busted out there by Clayton Valley. There's a nice lead pass coming here to the near side. Ooh, ooh. An attempt to make a great defensive play and kicked it right back down to Los Lomas. Up the battle for it, and now the Knights trying to keep this one in. There's a centering pass, oh. and this one is going to be kicked way <laughs> wide left. But, but from the angle that we have, it kind of looked like that was going on goal. The crowd believed that too. Oh my goodness. The execution was almost just perfect, just the angle was a little off, and that sent that ball flying to the left side of the hoop. You know, Juan Perron, Perron of the, uh, the Knights, were able to chase that one down after battling with a, an Eagle defender and then got on off a nice centering pass, and that was a pretty good chance there for the Knights. Oh. And out of bounds, off of Los Lomas, and Clayton Valley had a chance to throw it in. In the 27th minute of this first half, talked about those titles for Clayton Valley and some of the guys that they have sent on to the college ranks. So Ed um, Castronara went to Humboldt. Dominic Rodriguez, he went to Stanislaus. And this one's gonna be the out of bounds on the far side. Throw in for Clayton, back it comes here the other way. Max Loza went to Northeastern in Seattle. When he said Northeast in Seattle, Northeast? <laughs> no, I was going to say that sounded a lot like Northwestern, yeah. so I was thinking of, you know, East Coast over there. But, but he told huh. me it's a college, they play soccer, he's there. Okay, good so for him. I moved on that. from Clayton, and he's playing <laughs> soccer at the next level. And then uh, Fran Escobita, well, he's at San Francisco State, and he's playing the goalie for the Gators right now. So wow. he stayed close to home. But it's just interesting to see, you know, the talent that comes out of here and then um, off to the college ranks. I mean, I know we've discussed it before, but that these programs, these high school programs shining through is probably, you know, inspiring a lot of kids to look up and say, our high schools play great, I want to learn soccer. So there's probably a lot of clubs who are now gaining a lot of kids, young girls or boys who want to play soccer now because these high school players are shining and showing that they are the best in the league. So you can tell these kids, these guys are probably a really big inspiration for a lot of youth in Walnut Creek right now. Yeah, and you think, you know, every four years with the World Cup, soccer's got to get a huge <laughs> boost with that. Oh I know my, uh, my nephew was playing at school and then was watching a little bit of the World Cup and he was very much inspired to play because of that. It had such a big impact. I remember some of the games were on during classes and our teachers would shut down class for a couple minutes. Really? Don't, don't tell our principal, <laughs> but it shut down class for a couple minutes to show a couple clips of the <laughs> World Cup, especially when Japan was playing. Our Japanese class was all over it. So. <laughs> you know, something that gets everybody fired up. And this one kicked toward the goal and wide left. So not a shot on goal that time, but uh, all of a sudden the tables have turned here a little bit. Los Lomas' offense has been doing a little bit better. I do think they do want to try and conserve their energy. The amount of time they spend downfield should be less than the amount of time, you know. I feel they should spend more time in the midfield because if they wear themselves out trying to score, 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 it could turn the tables for Clayton Valley and allow them to play more time down there. I've seen it a couple of times in games. You want to wear out your opponent more than you want them attacking and doing whatever else. And that certainly would bode well in that type of situation that you're talking about for Los Lomas mm -hmm. because they are certainly a deeper team than Clayton Valley. Especially a lot of the areas in the field, they go like six deep. Told me that um, all six guys are going to get, uh, you know, quite a few minutes. And the coach Atkins, Atkins was talking to me about it. And he said that when different guys come in and out, there really isn't much of a drop off from the starters to the to the subs. And here's one centering pass and kicked away by Clayton Valley. Had a, to add on to that, I was talking to one of the captains for Las Lomas number 20, Kai Rosenbaum, who was telling me, I've never had a moment 
where I felt as though our level had dropped on or off whenever someone entered the field. I trust all my teammates. Unlike other teams who have a good starting 11, every player on this team has something to give, and you can see that whenever they step on and off the field. We talked about uh, the last time we were here, the level of commitment that it takes for soccer. I mean, it's oh not goodness. just, you know, <laughs> practice a couple times a week and then show up for a game every now and again. I mean, this is really a full-time deal for these players and all year around. Driving home from work, I pass by this field and I always <laughs> see them out running, doing something new, trying their best to learn the game even better than the day they did before. And it just, it really pays off in moments like these where they're playing for the league championship. Well, that one was booted right down in front of the goal, but uh, Clayton Valley got the head on the ball before Los Lomas did. Los Lomas spending a lot of time here in the Clayton end of the field. And here comes Clayton the other way. The Eagles try to get something going. They avoid the offsides penalty there. Nice feed to the inside. Boy, this one knocked away. Haven Salih had, a, had it for a moment but then was unable to keep it. And that was another one of those situations with where Salih had the ball getting to his body and you want to get that ball so quickly to your feet. And But by the time he did, a defender was on him. I don't know how they do it. I just want to catch that ball and put it down. <laughs> They're right, so, so good with their body and without using their arms. That's hard for a lot of people, but they've learned to just kind of live without it and play everything they can. Corner oh. kick, and this one is in. Counted for Clayton, and they are ahead one to nothing. Marco Hara. And then, now, w w wait a minute here. Are they, gonna, are they saying this went to the side of the goal? Los Lomas is protesting here, and I think they're going to say this is not a goal. It, Nolan Martin, yeah. there's number three running down there, and Clayton Valley is protesting vigorously here. I mean, our previous angles of the previous shots down on the other side looked like they were in, so this one could be. Yeah, it looks, that looks like, like it's in from there after the corner kick. And I think it was Nolan Martin who kicked it after the corner to get it in, and there you see Hara. Let us see if we can get a shot of that a little bit earlier in that play, but uh, in any event, here in the 21st minute, it is Clayton Valley on the board wow. first, one to nothing, and I tell you, Los Lomas and their fans have gotta be a little bit stunned. Somebody scored on us. Those are, I feel like those are the best goals where it's from the absolute other side of the goal and somehow it curves just enough where a teammate is just in the right spot, kicks it in, and you have a goal. It's teams like this who can communicate efficiently and read what's going on around them that are going to score. Clayton Valley off the corner kick in the 26th minute. And I'm not sure who officially is gonna get that goal, but Tahara with the good corner and then I, couldn't quite see. I'm, I'm thinking it was number three, Nolan Martin, but I'd like to see that again. Here's Nolan Martin with the throw in. But in any event, one to nothing Clayton here. And Los Lomas has given up a goal. Stop the presses. Los Lomas trying to retaliate. This one is going to go out of bounds. Martin touching it last. <laughs> Raises his hands and off of me. Are you kidding? Are you sure? I think it's kind of cool how soccer just kind of like self refs themselves. Like, oh, we know that you kicked it out and that's just how it's going to be. <laughs> There's a thrown in right in the middle, but uh, knocked away by Salih quickly. There's that one curve, headed up into the air and in right into the hands of the goalie that time. <laughs> David Gallego is able to retrieve that one, but uh, pretty good looking chance there and an opportunity for Las Lomas. Little flair there with the dive at the end. He knows what he's doing, so he's gonna show it. Talk about Gallegos reading that ball well, big heart. And uh, you know, they play a lot of the top teams in the area. They're not playing a cupcake schedule. So you know that the year he's had and the uh, saves that he's made, I believe he's got 27 on the year. He's done very well in that situation against quality talent. 
There are very few games looking at their schedule where there's been, you know, a very, very close difference in the score. A lot of the scores, 1-0, maybe 3-0. How about that Deer Valley game on December 15th, 7-0. He knows how to do his job, and he's going to do it as well as he can every single time. Yeah, not a whole lot of um, games where he's got a, you know, three or four goal cushion. They're playing in a lot of one-score games. And that's what I find so interesting about soccer. It's not like football or basketball where there's multiple points you generate every single second. This game takes time, and you can see it pay off with every goal that you score. Boy, that was some fancy footwork right there. Who was that? That was number 20, Brandon Ristoff, a sophomore. And now we have a whistle here as a body hits the floor. It was Marco, no, pardon me. Kai Rosenbaum with that fancy footwork. And Milan Chavez ended up hitting the deck. So they blow the whistle against Clayton Valley. And it's uh, Los Lomas who's gonna get uh, a free kick here inside Clayton territory. We've seen Clayton have a few chances with this one. This one, a Ooh, nice boot toward beautiful. the goal. This one to be headed oh. and headed away from the goal. Well, now kicked out of bounds, but boy, beautiful. that was close. And you see the value of a guy with a strong leg and put it right into offensive scoring position immediately. Ooh. And then quickly kicking this one out of bounds is Haven Salee. And Los Lomas will toss it in here. Clayton in the 26th minute coming off a corner kick. Able to grab the lead here in the first half. one nothing in favor of the Eagles. Trying to get this one in the middle of the field. Sort of centering pass. This one off a of body here. And this one will go over the end line. Second corner kick of the game, we're going to see. So Los Lomas, are they going to get a corner kick here? I believe they are. Or the referees lined up over there. <laughs> and now they have to go chase the ball. So mean. <laughs> as if they don't do enough running as it is. I'm wondering, if, maybe they can just have a couple more balls on the sideline to throw. <laughs> maybe NCS is when they get their professional ball handlers in the quarters waiting for them. Uh, They're probably They really are gonna get a quarter <laughs> kick here, Brooke. Yay. As that ball went over the end line. And of course, last touch by Clayton. So here comes Los Lomas. Juan Perón, and this one headed toward the goal, and then headed back oh. out, and then wide left. And boy, the Eagles dodge a huge bullet right there. That was really close that time. It was a heart stopper for everyone in the booth and in the bleachers below us. Well, sometimes, you know, the, the game with the ball kind of in the middle of the field, you know, it's just like, well, what's gonna happen yeah. here? And then all of a sudden the ball gets near that goal and the intensity level really rises. So Los Lomas has had its chances here in this first half. Take a look there, and just wide to the left in Clayton <laughs> Valley. <in> shock. <laughs> Very happy. That was Hara there, just clapping vigorously. As he knows, the Clayton Eagles just dodged a bullet here, and they will maintain this 1-0 lead. trying to figure out how that doesn't hurt just taking a ball with that much speed to your head and you can't get it right off the top of the head that really hurts it's got to be more of the forehead the sort of the crown area on your head and this one's going to go out of bounds here down in the near corner so Los Lomas has had its chances especially lately but is Clayton with the one nothing leaders a throw in for the Eagles trying to get this one centered but uh, headed away Nicely by Avador. Part of that good back line that we talked about. And boy, we're gonna have a couple of bodies hitting the floor here, but no whistle, and this one going back over the end line. Looks like we have an injured knight down near the 30. You know, on the sideline over there. And a whistle's gonna stop play, and they're gonna check him out. So Dylan Browning, number 25, 
over there on the sideline and well, he appears to be in some pain holding that right ankle and we can only hope that he's going to be okay but we've got an injury timeout here in Los Lomas it's one nothing Eagles Here's Kurt Atkins, the head coach of Los Lomas. Tom, can I bring my man on? Yeah, Kurt, seventh year as the head coach, spent four years, four seasons here as an assistant. Last year they went 14-3-4, uh, and four, lost to Monta Vista in the first round. Won the league two of the last four years, Brooke, and finished second in the other two, and won NCS in 2020. And well, that was the team that he told me the practices were so intense that he started making the players wear shin guards where normally they wouldn't. I think they would always wear shin guards, but wear apparently they guards. don't <laughs> always. But they were so intense in practice. He just said, for their own safety, guys, you've got to go out and <laughs> make sure to protect yourself. But that was a team that finished with a title that year. A team who's going as far as to cover themselves just to protect, just in case they're going a little too I mean, hard, is probably a team who's going to have that payoff later. But oh my goodness, <laughs> whenever you're around, just everybody's kicking the ball around. I would want my shins protected, I'd, I want every part of me <laughs> yeah, protected. Really, you know, you're going to take one in the shin. Beautiful kick. Tara working it back to a teammate here. And Clayton works it back, trying to get themselves in position where they can get this ball in the offensive end. And here down the sideline, if they can get a centering pass here, defenders all around. And Cooper Witten, they're surrounded by defenders, and now this one going the other way. Kai Rosenbaum, I believe that's number 20 on the time. He looks like he's got a lot of speed. And here come the Knights. And this one's going to be kicked off. Number three, Nolan Martin. It's ironic you bring up Kai Rosenbaum's speed. He said one of the things he wanted to be known for is his speed, but he also wanted to make sure his teammates knew he was open-minded and he always loved being a helpful teammate for them. So, Part of that uh, fantastic defense that they're playing here this year. And that's a you know, pretty easy motto to follow. If the other team doesn't score, they can't win. Los Lomas' motto is actually, we don't lose at home. And that has been true all season. So we're going to have to see if they uphold that motto or if Clayton Valley can break through at this, this game. Yeah, the only blemish, that 2-2 uh, two -two tie back in January against these Eagles. And that's been it as far as the resume goes for Los Lomas. And this one quickly headed out of bounds. And there's a throw in for Clayton. And battling here in the middle of the field, here comes the Eagles down the far side. Into the corner, and this one hit up and over the goal and out of bounds. Seems to be the Knights are doing a lot of plays where if they, they're struggling or they're getting cornered, their best goal is to hit it off the Clayton Valley defender or, or off offender and try and make them do something to get that ball back out of bounds so they get a second chance. And although it may seem like we're stopping the game a lot and waiting, it's actually kind of smart trying getting the ball back, resetting, allowing your offense to move forward and try and make a play is just better than just having the ball stolen from you and having to run down the field again, so. And you're looking for as many opportunities as possible. This one's gonna go out of bounds. And it looks like the Eagles will throw it in on their side of the field. So talking about uh, Kurt Atkins again, he was actually assisted by Kevin Clark who took over Doherty Valley's program a year ago and he said uh, they're taking a lot what they did here to Doherty and they're having quite a bit more success as well. Clark took over that program last year. 
And uh, actually this year, talk about how good Doherty has become. They actually beat uh, De La Salle this season. That's always impressive that, to hear that about De La Salle going down. They don't down. lose very often no, at anything. Not. Oh, nice. Getting into the passing lane right there was Sky McKeezy. Mm. And he was able to do that in a book without a collision that time. It looked like he was going to crash into the Los Lomas player, and I think that was number 20, Kai Rosenbaum. And here's some good looking dribbling right here, getting it off to a teammate. Can they get the centering pass? There's so many defenders there. Sea of red over there. It really there. is. I mean, you could see them going down that far sideline and looking to get that ball kicked back toward the middle in front of the goal. And you just got not one, not two, but three defenders in there to thwart that what would have been an opportunity. As an offensive player, I mean, I'm sure Clayton Valley is thinking we want to get that corner kick again because they succeeded so well. But you also have more room. You have a bunch of players centered right in front of the goal. And if you can kick it just high enough and just far enough, someone can make a play. So they're really hoping Los Lomas screws up in that, that backfield over there so they can get another chance to score. And the Los Lomas not playing anymore. They just kick this one back into the Clayton zone. Tired of it. <laughs> get back <laughs> get over there. Get rid of this one. <laughs> And this one's going to be going the other way, and that is going to be out of bounds off of Clayton. So Los Lomas going to have a chance to throw it in on the far side on the nice side of the field. On the Clayton Valley side of the field, I should say. And he's down to the corner, and this one's going to go out of bounds. many people who don't watch soccer very regularly are thinking, hmm, why don't they just stay in the middle of the field and avoid going to those edges? Because clearly that's not working out very well. I mean, that's a thought I've had several times. I don't know about you, but. Try this. <laughs> I don't know if they can hear me from up here, but I recommend it. Here's Perron. Booting it in, and the Knights are going to try to keep it in the zone here. Trailing one to nothing here, getting late in this first half. This one sent goalward, and Ooh. that one is going to be caught in the air by Gallegos, and then only contacted by a defender there. Really, the crowd didn't like that very much, but the officials don't seem to have a problem with it. Gallegos seems to be okay <laughs> with it as well. All smiles over there on the Clayton side. There's no, like, roughing the passer kind of equivalent for <laughs> well, running into the goalie. There could right. be. I mean, you can't crash into him when he catches <laughs> the ball. I know that. Colin Hunter boots that away for Clayton. Joust on the sideline. And Los Lomas going to get possession here. Quick throw in here for the Knights. I'm not about to. <laughs> Sometimes it's better to <laughs> let your teammates go get set up before you just quickly throw it in. Although there may be benefits to it, that one did not work out as well. It's uh, just sometimes, it's, you know, the nature of soccer, there's just very difficult to get continuity offensively yeah. a lot of times. Oh, yes. You're losing the ball every 20 seconds right. because it's leaving your possession. I mean, it must just hit. Feels so hard to get into a rhythm sometimes. Like right there, it's gone already. <laughs> Going back the other way. Oh, what a good header that time. That was Maverick Wilson, number five. His brother played on that uh, 20 championship team. Hara again working with it, works it back to a teammate. Los Lomas and spilling over, and now they're gonna, they're gonna blow the whistle here, and I think this is gonna go against Clayton. So the feet look like the feet got tangled. There's Hara talking it over with the official. Oh, 
yellow card. Boy, a warning has been issued wow. here. Wow. <laughs> My first yellow card in soccer I've ever witnessed. I feel like it's like, like a rite of passage right now. Well, of course, now. the red card is the big one. Oh, yes. That will be the Don't ejection. And it did look like he kind of ran over him. It wasn't more so a trip, like a bulldozed his way over the top of that <laughs> player. So kind of understand. Into the fourth minute here of this first half. Here's the free kick coming from Clayton, headed away quickly by the Eagles. Knights and a big crowd here. If they can get that ball go all the way back here. Oh, headed Ooh. forward and Gallego's gonna come out and get this one in the box. <laughs> I wanna understand the falling. Looks reason. like he <laughs> dove on the, on the fall that time. Of course, he's gotta be in that box to use his hands. Come out of there, then you just like a regular player that's, that's kicked out of bounds. I guess if you spend enough time inside of that goalie's box, you kind of understand where your lines are. Right. If you put me in there, I'd be catching that well, ball just 20 yards off. Looking down, they have so many lines here for lacrosse, soccer, football. football. <laughs> Yellow, white. It's a mess a over blue. there. Oh boy, that was like a body bump right there. No whistle on that one. Quite a bit of contact there. The crowd was thinking they they had a whistle blown, but the play on, say the officials. So that was a nice job playing the ball from the chest to the feet. <laughs> nice trailing it one to nothing here, getting late. This one over the head of number three, Martin. Unfortunately, right there, the Gallegos was right there to grab that one. And his ability to read that ball and see that he needed to step in and come help his teammates out really probably saved a goal. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and this one handled by Darer. He gives it a good leg here. The Knights can turn this into some offense. Battling on the sideline and stays in bounds. Oh, good looking footwork right there. To add, the clock has just stopped, which means it's up to the referee to decide when the first half has ended. We did have that injury a little earlier in the half, meaning a couple, maybe an extra minute or two will be added to the clock. Here come the Knights. There's one toward the goal, and Gallego is able to kick the ground ball. And then booted there by Perron, number 11, the junior. But it didn't have a whole lot of mustard on it. And an easy save there for Gallegos, but it was a shot on goal for the Knights. This one laced, and this one a little harder. Gallegos able to gather that one up. And that was number 20, Kai Rosenbaum. So a couple of shots on goal here in the last half a minute, but uh, easy chances for Gallegos. Knights are just aiming everywhere he is. It's really <laughs> hard to get around him if he's everywhere. Here's Perone header, but kicked away. Knights able to keep this one in. Nice pass over there, and this one's gonna go out of bounds. Over the end line, but we saw a couple of nice passes there in a tight, sort of circle. The Knights not able to get a shot on goal there, but uh, getting their feet on it close to the goal and uh, getting some offense going here for Las Lomas, but still frustrated here and being shut out of the first half. Crowd starting to rumble here below us, and I'm hearing a cowbell. <laughs> More cowbell. <laughs> I got a fever. <laughs> the only prescription. <laughs> oh, 
So we are in the uh, waning seconds here of the first half. Barone with a header. Clayton trying to get it out of their end of the field, and they do. Become a bit of a circus with all the headbutting over there. Oh, taken away here by Clayton on the side. Nice looking play there by number 21, Mason Fridley. Clayton Valley has a chance to make it two to zero going into the second half. Oh, oh. Booted off a, a teammate there. <laughs> a little brutal. Knights trying to go back the other way, and oh. Clayton gonna boot this one in. They were gonna go back and make the catch. Body on the floor here. Somebody wanted a foul of some sort. And this is gonna be a whistle that's gonna go against the Eagles and a free kick up coming here for Las Lomas. Well, this is very borrowed time right now. It's going to depend on if they can make this play in order to make it tied. This one headed away by Clayton. Eagles trying to get it out of the zone here, and that will do it for the first half. So, a Clayton Valley is a goal off a corner kick has been the only goal of the game so far. And at the end of one half of play here from Los Lomas, it is Clayton Valley one and the Knights nothing. Come on back, second half. Coming up right here on Walnut Creek TV. What's up? We have a gun. Why do you ask that, kiddo? Can I play with it? No, absolutely not. It's not a toy. You know that. Anyway, I need it to protect you, your sister and mom. But what about the eight kids who get shot every day by mistake? Where'd you hear that? Where'd you keep it? <laughs> it's hidden. 
I bet it's on the top shelf of the closet, under your sweatshirts. Is it loaded? Remember when I found my Christmas gift? You always told me to be curious. No. No, that's not what I meant. It was just me and Mom. I could use the gun to protect her. No, Justin. I promise. I'm always here for you. But, Dad, you're not always here.
And back here at Los Lomas, one nothing in favor of the visiting Eagles. Uh, Mark O'Hara gets the goal in the 26th minute for Clayton off the corner kick. It looked like it went off the arm of uh, Mickey Darer to score that the only goal here of the night. But uh, looking pretty good here for both teams. Both teams had offensive chances, but still only the one goal. And that was really to be expected here this evening. I think something we brought up earlier is the ability to tire out another team's offense. If you keep them on your side of the field, yes, you have more opportunities to score. But it also means that you're you're spending more time trying to shoot, trying to do everything. And that means in the second half, maybe Clayton or Los Lomas will just be better and they'll come forward and take advantage of the other teams more, you know, being super worn out like that. Here's Marco with that kick and then Darer diving for it there and it looks Ooh. like it just tipped off his arm and went into the goal. At first he thought it <laughs> had gone from the outside into the goal, but no, that is the goal scored and that is the lone goal so far here in this game and that, you know, you never know, that could be the one that decides this, D D this DFAL championship. So, Brooke, so glad that you can be with us for these last uh, few games, and this is going to be our last game of the season. Hopefully we'll have football for you um, next season. But tell us a little bit about yourself, Brooke, and what, uh, what brought you to us. So I was actually offered the opportunity through a family connection that I had, and I'm really appreciative that they gave me the opportunity to be a part, part of this team and do color commentary. I really I think this job is so amazing because you learn so much more outside of just what the sport is. You get to learn the inner workings, the thoughts that go into it. You get to know the players, the coaches, the community, and it's it's really just been an amazing opportunity. I thank you guys so much for letting me be a part of it. So this is uh, your senior year here at Los Lomas. You're all done with high school um, in just a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Um, your future plans? So I intend to major in broadcast journalism at a variety of schools. Hopefully I find the right one out like in a couple marches when I find out about most of them. But hopefully Syracuse or University of Washington is where <laughs> I'm headed to study. But this job has really, really been amazing and it really teaches you how to go and, you know, be prominent in your community and how to analyze and do all that. So if this is a spot that anyone else thinks they're interested in, take advantage of it. Now and remember, um, if you are free during the summer, we might have some baseball for you. Not Ooh, here at Walnut Creek baseball. TV, but we might have some minor league baseball for you in Martinez. So one and nothing here and the second half uh, just about get ready to start. And hopefully for Los Lomas, they'll have a chance to uh, get the equalizer as we begin the second half of play. one nothing in favor of Clayton Valley. Second half coming up right now. Good looking shot on that replay so we can see exactly what happened on that uh, one goal. And Los Lomas trying to get it back here as they trail it one nothing as we begin the second half of play here from Los Lomas. Oh, right off a of player <laughs> at point blank range. You can no hear less. it. Ouch. Hear the wind. <laughs> oh. Players collide. This one is going to go against the Knights over the back that time, or going against the Eagles that time over the back. The Knights trying to make some offense out of this one. More and more, I watch soccer. I'm realizing how truly intense it is like guys jumping on top of each other heading balls you're like you expect that from football basketball wrestling stuff like that but a game where you can only use your legs they tend to trip each other up a lot more than you think and there's a lot of body work that goes in it as far as positioning goes screening people off so you can get the ball there's a lot more physical contact than, than you'd think mm -hmm. you know and with the with the header sometimes you do have some injuries in soccer certainly I'm sure a lot of these guys have concussions or had concussions from doing something like that. I would have a concussion from doing that. I mean, a couple of guys, you know, a couple of players go up for the ball, both trying to head it. I mean, mm -hmm. chances are they're going to bang heads from time yep. to time. <laughs> head the other person. <laughs> There's one in the corner. Kind of outraced the player that time. That was really nice. Kai Rosenbaum sort of outraced uh, Sky Majisi there for that ball to take that one away. Looked like Majisi was gonna have a chance to turn that corner and get that one centered, but uh, Los Lomas was able to take that one away. Such a quick start, we're already about uh, two minutes in. We're in the 38th minute right now, and it's just insane to see how quickly we've moved back and forth on the field already. And that one goes out of bounds. The Clayton Valley 
played at Logan earlier in the year, a tough place to play. They beat them in the last seconds of the game. It was a corner kick, top of the box. And it was uh, one timed in there and really, really was the last 30 seconds of the game that time. So Clayton Valley played a couple of close ones. And Logan's a team that uh, normally has a good program as well. They're regarded as one of the better programs in the area. Talking about the Clayton Valley playing, you know, a tough schedule. Certainly not a lot of cupcakes for them. And apparently corner kicks are their specialty. Yeah. <laughs> That's the difference in the game so far here. Into that corner and again, double teamed with the defense there and just not a whole lot of room to operate. Defenders are really on it again here tonight. And really, Brooke, the, the goalies, other than the one goal that scored, there haven't been a lot of what we'd call great saves. There's been some yeah. shots on goal, but the, the defense, the back line defense has been so good, the goalies really haven't been tested on either side tonight. There's been a couple sliding steals, something like that, but not a lot of, you know, running and making a great effort at the moment to make an amazing play. There's been a lot of effort in terms of protecting that ball and keeping it off one side, but I mean, as to something show-stopping, not a lot of that just yet, <laughs> except that corner kick, which <laughs> has decided the fate for this first half of the game. This one booted down. And Los Lomas tries to get it back out of the zone, but it's uh, gonna be kept in by Clayton's Tredenick. And then back the other way. Los Lomas, nice dribbling there. Ooh. And now we're going to have a trip oh. here and a whistle. And it's going to be against Clayton Valley. And we're going to have a free kick here for Los Lomas. Yeah, everyone and their mother could see that that was a shove. That was. <laughs> that was just a nice job to get the ball between two defenders. Really split a couple of defenders with a nice dribble. And body hits the floor and a free kick upcoming here for Los Lomas looking for the equalizer here. 36th minute of the second half. Moving over to the side, pinballs around and then Clayton able to kick it out of bounds here. And a throw in from the far side for Los Lomas. That was an interesting short play. I felt like trying to send it a little bit deeper and hope your teammates could knock it in or with their head or something like that would have been the better alternative. But they did get the ball back, so that is a better thing. Go out to that wing, and the first thing you really want to do is get that centering pass. It's just there's so many people there. There's a centering pass. Oh. This one headed wide, left. Boy, that was a good looking oh. pass right there. And Los Lomas able to get the head on the ball right in front of the goal, but wide left. Talk about speed with Kai Rosenbaum. He, he made an effort to get out there just again, the wrong angle at the right time. Just did not work out. Talk about fast players, Colby Allred. Coach Atkins calls him the fastest player he's ever seen in high school. And this was a guy that was on those uh, 2020 teams. He's at Chico now, so we're talking about the guys that are moving on. And they had a guy named Saul Bronstone who was a, a center back. And uh, he was so good, he got a couple of nicknames. Not just one, but two. Saul the Wall and Half Man, <laughs> Half Beast. Saul the Wall. So if you good. get one nickname, that's pretty good. But when you get more than one, you know you're special. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Atkins about that 2020 team, and you can just hear it in his voice how proud he is of that squad and you know last several years all the uh, mm -hmm. success that the Knights have had usually when we talk sports I feel like we hear a lot about men's soccer women's soccer they tend to be the dominant sports in at least the winter season several other sports do have their moments but it tends to be the soccer teams that really show up and go really far in NCS so it's always cool to see Talking about Toronto in that uh, championship game for 2020. He ended up scoring both goals in that title game as they beat Redwood to take the championship. You can see the using the body as leverage creates some space and to get the ball. Ooh. Puts a jolt into this one. Eagles trying to play it in the ninth end of the 
field. There's Salih who's been all over the place tonight. And he's gonna have a chance here to throw it in from the far side here for Clayton Valley. Notice we've spent a lot more time on Clayton Valley's goal than we have mostly over here on the left. So that's, that's kind of surprising to see how quickly the tides have turned. So Mickey Dreer did end up giving up that one goal here. That's the difference in the ball game, but uh, he has had such a fantastic season in goal this year. I mean, no fear, very strong technically. And Los Lomas, you know, over the years, they've had some excellent goalkeepers. Mm -hmm. You know, but they haven't had the guy that's, uh, as Kurt was telling me, that is tall enough that the colleges are really looking for guys 6'4", 6'5". Oh. And then they say, well, these guys are only like 6'1", 6'2". Oh, only. Only. <laughs> only. <laughs> what a shrimp. Oh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, I've heard a lot about that. Some of our football linemen are too short, but they're the like right size to go play, but they're an inch too short yeah. to play. And I'm like, what is that? But apparently at the college level, that's kind of the oh. prototype that they're looking for, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, type of guy. But the You're not gonna find Lomas. a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> like but he said that uh, as far as Mickey is concerned though, that if he does want to play at the next level, uh, Coach Adkins says there will definitely be a spot for him. He is that good. Oh, of course. And there's not always just the D1 level. There's several levels that can include everyone. I mean, if you're not wanting to play that competitively in college, they do have club teams, intramural. They also have JUCO, you know, community college options, too, if you if you don't fit that weird D1 6'5 height requirement because not everyone is 6'5". <laughs> but I just thought it was funny that... Six, six feet, six one, six two, too short. Too short. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> okay, Clayton Valley looking to extend the lead here. Nice able to send it away. Rosenbaum boots it down. Looking to get that ball to a teammate. I think that is number, trying to get it to number 18, Roman Mahmoud. Oh, pardon me, that is the wrong one. Evan Bowers, pardon me. But Eight and nine look about yeah. the same from this distance. Just to trying to get that offensive continuity very difficult here. Martin going to turn and give this one a jolt and keep that one inbounds here. Rosenbaum working here to the outside. Ooh. And then hits this one with the left foot, but right off a Clayton defender. And here come the Eagles back Whoa. the other way, and there is going to be a tackle there. One well, of the Knights players, it looked like that was Evan Bowers there. Knocked down one of the Eagles. I think that's number 23. Gio Negret. And Negret. Five assists on the season for him. So he's been productive for this offense. And here's Clayton Valley here to kick it in. Immediately right into the offensive end here, and we're going to have a whistle, and that's going to go against Clayton. Not exactly sure. It must have been too much body contact, I would think. Tough to see where the infraction was that time, but in any event, going against the Eagles. Always hard to see where the contact is made, especially when two people are up in the air like that. It's just sometimes you just gotta trust the referees, I guess. <laughs> well, they certainly know more about it than I do, but sometimes we have seen more contact without a whistle and then less contact with a whistle. Which makes me wonder where that second ref on the field usually is. <laughs> There's Negret playing it back to a teammate, there's Hara, and now body bumping here, and this one going against Clayton Valley again. Crowd is not happy with that. <laughs> you can tell they love their players <laughs> a lot. I like the chant, you can't do that. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that one before.
Maverick Wilson, one of the center backs for Los Lomas. Talking about his uh, brother Kirk, was a center back on that uh, championship team. And the outside guys for this this team very good. Coolidge and Bowers, we just been talking about here a little bit. That's the four guys for the uh, line for Los Lomas has been excellent this year. I think you get to brag your, about yourself a little bit when you've only let four goals, now five through your entire life. Yeah, into the 20th mm -hmm. game. I mean, we know it's hard to score, but, and now we have a penalty here. Another body hits the floor, and it looks like Los Lomas is gonna get a free kick here, Ooh. pretty deep in the uh, Clayton Valley end. Questions have come up if this game does tie. I believe it'll be a shootout at that point, but Los Lomas has to score that goal first before that's even a consideration. I, mean, I just don't know how you could let what is a, a championship game go for a tie. You didn't have I to couldn't. finish that one. You wouldn't let the Super Bowl end yeah. in a tie. <laughs> <laughs> so Los Lomas gonna get the penalty kick here. You see that wall that's being built there in front of the goal. So the Knights looking for the equalizer. I would have gone for it there. <laughs> there oh, it is. Oh. And this one hit off a Eagle player and it's gonna go toward the sideline. Tricky. <laughs> I, I had no idea, I thought. <laughs> thought number 10 Milan Chavez was gonna go for that one. Headed away from the goal, right side. And up the near side, here come the Eagles now. They're Will Carranza it. had it, lost it. Knights are gonna get it back. But a pretty good opportunity there for Los Lomas, but uh, they did not get the shot on goal again. That might so come back to bite them a yeah. little later in the game. Just don't know how many more opportunities you're gonna get. And that, that threat turned out to be a, a rather mild threat. Here's a nice steal going down the near side. Been looking for oh. a teammate. And boy, body's hitting the floor here. Wow. Boy, a nasty collision. I believe that was number 10, Milan Chavez gave his whole body for that ball. And also I wonder what they're gonna call it. Dylan Lynch involved. <laughs> in that uh, contact down there. Let's see how they're gonna call this. It looks like it's gonna go against Clayton. They're gonna get another penalty kick here. Let's see. You no, know it's a good thing for the Knights when that cowbell comes back out. There's Chavez, looks like he's lining up. He's gonna have another chance to kick this one. Really deep in the Clayton Valley end of the field. But sometimes with that big wall of guys out there, here it is, oh, and it's, yeah, right off another into Eagles the wall. player. That's happened a couple of times where you know, it looks like a good situation for the offense, but there's just so many guys standing Then, I mean, it's, it's almost like you've got to put the ball over the wall and hope that the uh, goalie doesn't make the catch in the air. Exactly. If you keep shooting straight directly into their chest, I mean, you're not gonna <laughs> it's get not it. Going <laughs> it's not going through. Unless that ball's traveling like 120 miles That's per really hour good. and shatters them. All right, Los Lomas loses it on the far side. And the Eagles are gonna toss it in. Kicking down here in the 24th minute of the second half, still one nothing in favor of Clayton on the Mark O'Hara corner kick goal. It went off the hand of Darer and it was contested a little bit as to whether that came from the outside part of the goal. And then looking at it again, it was certainly a goal so it was a good call by the officials there. And you just certainly would hate to see something end on a controversial play, especially if the, if the call was missed. Mm -hmm. a, a league championship decided on a poor call. It would certainly be a downer here for the what has been such a fantastic season for both these teams. a long time to get that <laughs> last throw in there. We'll play soccer eventually. <laughs> a little unusual as to why that was 
such a, a pause there, but uh, here comes Clayton Valley. Can they get oh. a centering pass? And boy, that is taken Beautiful away. Steal. Uh, would have been a great steal. Yeah, that's Adiel Avador, who we talked about earlier, that, that wonderful back line. It looked like he made the great takeaway there, but apparently that's going to be out of bounds against him. So a throw-in situation here for Clayton on the far side. Into the corner, too many defenders around. You want to kind of turn and spin on that ball. There, Nice kick there to try to center it. Los Lomas able to oh. get it back going the other way. And this is, they'll just play this one mm. back to Gallegos. Great hustle. But on the other end there, you know, Brooke, um, you had the player in the middle of like two or three defenders who was able to turn and get a pretty good centering pass and all that chaos. All right, here comes Los Lomas into the corner. Ooh. There's one toward the goal. Gallegos oh. off the crossbar. Oh. oh, what a play there. Mason Lissy, number 19, with that shot on goal, and Gallegos was backpedaling that time. Take another look. Lissy's gonna come over here, and then that one timer, look at Gallegos backing up. I don't think he would have been able to get that one if it had been a little bit lower. That would have been a goal. Oh boy, right off the crossbar, and that was an exciting play right there. Los Lomas that close to tying yeah. up this game. I think he's more used to falling down on top of a ball than reaching back and trying <laughs> to grab it. So that would have been a very yeah, he difficult He was backpedaling a, a bit awkwardly. Like he was not in a position to make a really good jump to make the catch. That was almost what Los Lomas needed, but you can see the confidence has come back into them. They know they can do it. Boy, Lissy, a nice play to get this one to the side. And this one's gonna go off a, the centering pass is gonna go off a Clayton defender and out of bounds. And that's gonna, I think this is gonna result in a corner kick here for Los Lomas because that went off one of the Eagles that over the end line, so Los Lomas is gonna get a chance for a corner kick here. They need to be smart with this. They're losing time. They need to be you know, aware of what's going on around them and make that right kick or else they're gonna struggle for the rest of the game trying to bring that ball in closer. Here's the corner kick, looking for the equalizer and caught oh. by Gallegos. And then <laughs> the <ball>. <laughs> I wanna know the reason for that. Why can he not stand? <laughs> Are they going to tackle him? Because like this is not unusual. He's done that a few times yeah. today. This is just this is just his thing. Move, I guess. But he is able to make the catch and thwart that that effort for Los Lomas. So Gallegos getting it done in goal here tonight, and right now pitching a shutout against a very tough Los Lomas team. This one goes out of bounds. So looking at Los Lomas since that tie against Clayton Valley, they won seven in a row just given up those, those four goals all year, won their first five by a combined 26 to nothing. Oh my goodness. So you talk about uh, low scoring games, well they played some <laughs> high scoring games too, high scoring for them, not for the other team. <laughs> and Northgate scored one on January the 3rd. Knights went five more games without giving up a goal. And in that period, Brooke, they outscored opponents 15 to nothing. Wow. And of course, since that Clayton tie, they won seven in a row and outscored opponents 22 to one in that period. So they have been dominating opponents this year. I don't know what's in the water in Walnut Creek, but clearly these guys know how to play soccer. Yeah, no, they're, they're exceptionally good this season. And as we talked about uh, just Atkins tenure and over the last several years, they've been fantastic. If not the best, the second best team. I'm just curious to know because they were able to put two goals up against Clayton Valley last time they played and there's been only a couple like maybe two or three attempts. What they have been playing behind since the 26th minute of that uh, first Ooh. half. That was almost a collision. <laughs> there's that body jostling right there nicely played by Clayton but uh, Los Lomas able to thwart the effort there. It seems to be their, their dribbling and passing is just struggling. They're sending it right to a Clayton Valley defender almost every single time, and they're losing that momentum to make it to a teammate so they can send it down the field and make one of those great plays like Mason Lisi did earlier. Right. So 
if they can't get it to someone closer, they're going to struggle to make it make it in the net sooner than later. Majisi throwing it in here for Clayton, and now being chased down by Bar Gardizi, Monier Gardizi, but that one's going to go out of bounds. Here's Deer. Put the jolt into this one. Down the far side, looking for that centering pass. There it is, and it's going to be caught by Gallegos coming out from the goal and making the diving grab. So that one, he did have a good reason to fall on at that time. I, re I respect the fall. That was a nice that, play at that, that time. time. <laughs> the ones where you catch it when you're already standing up and then you fall. I, I may have to ask him after the game what that is. That looked like number 20, Kai Rosenbaum, with that good speed again, running down the far side. Able to get the centering pass, Brooke, but unfortunately for Los Lomas, the goalie, Gallegos, was first man on the spot. of a crowd yeah. over there. <laughs> and this one booted out of bounds by Clayton and the throw in here from the near side coming up for Las Lomas. Still a ton of time left. Still in the 17th minute of this uh, second half. There's certainly a lot of time left here for Las Lomas, but you'd have to figure if they gave up that second goal, it would feel like a, a huge mountain to climb. I just have received information that there are no shootouts until the playoffs, so this could end in a tie. I know. Wouldn't that be absolutely heartbreaking? Uh, we've got a player on the ground here. We'll see who that is for Clayton Valley. So we've got an injury here, stopping play here momentarily. Second time we've had that tonight. One uh, Los Lomas player earlier in the ball game was hurt for a while, and now it's Clayton Valley, and it looks like it's number four here for Clayton, Ryan Morimoto. Or not, pardon, that's number 14, not number four. It's Dylan Lynch, number 14. It, he appears no worse for wear, and he'll stay in the game. It was a good show of sportsmanship with Los Lomas going over to make sure he was okay. This one, and caught in the air by Deerer. So a good kick that time, but to, right to Mickey, who's able to make the catch in the air. crowd very very vocal here this evening Clayton is going to dump it in Mickey going to come out here and then feed it to a teammate Avador And this one going to the far side. Now he's going to chase it down over on the sideline. And it'll go out of bounds, and the Knights will throw it in from the far sideline. A lot of back and forth right now, and there's only 14 minutes left in this game, plus a little extra due to that injury. Oh, well, here we go. Gallegos coming out of goal here, and oh, then finally wow. booted away by Clayton. But here's Kai Rosenbaum with it. He sends it goalward and then wide left. It's a little bit more to the right, and it would have been perfect. <laughs> I think Gallegos would have been ready for it had it turned just a little bit more. It's hard. I think there's only been a couple attempts this game from Los Lomas, and just they're not making the right shots, and it's hurting them a lot right now. Colin Hunter coming into the game, number two for the Knights. And Clayton going to have a chance to kick this one away. Three headers. Only play it down to the ground here. Off the sideline. Oh, and a nice uh, footwork there. Trying to get free. Here comes the centering pass. Knocked away by Clayton Valley. He's got to make a 
make a play off of this. No chance, and this one sent goalward. And a nice play there by number 11, Sky Majisi, keeping that away from a Los Lomas Knight. Trying to chase that down was number 16, Nathan Palavos. But uh, Majisi able to use his body to kind of shield him and let that ball go out of bounds and give Clayton a chance to kick this one away. Yeah. Majisi talked to me. He said, you know, three years on VAR, we know what we're doing. It's just another game to me. It's, you know, it's obviously scary to know that our league title's up for grabs, but I know we'll come out on top. So he's got that confidence and he knows what he, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, he played, made a nice play. Here comes uh, Ball going to be thrown in here from the Los Lomas side here by the Eagles. Marco Tredenick, the freshman. There's a centering pass. But right to one of the Knights who boots it away. Too many times when that uh, centering pass comes in, the defensive player is first on the spot. And able to thwart the opportunity. And Majisi throwing it in here from that far side. It's a lot of opportunities for Clayton Valley, Clayton Valley, Clayton Valley to throw that ball in <laughs> and just try and throw another attack to make that nice defense, you know, less. Less op like less optimistic about their chances. <laughs> the more time they spend down there, the less time is spent <laughs> shooting a goal over here. And dare I say, it's getting late here. Yeah. 11th minute. This one is sent wow, that is out of bounds. Wow, to go chase down that one. <laughs> and somebody retrieving it here. Down off the sideline. All right, Los Lobos still trailing one to nothing. That horror goal, the 26th minute of the... Oh. This one coming right right towards <laughs> us. I'm going to make a save on that one. I would love to play, guys, but I don't know if you want me. <laughs> nice, possibly an opportunity here, trying to get it through some defenders. Here comes Los Lomas working with it. Oh. This one off the body of an eagle. Hara had it, couldn't keep it into the corner looking for that centering pass oh. and then knocked out of bounds. Beautifully done by Will Carranza, number two. There is sliding tackle. Able to get his foot on that ball before he hit the offensive player. It would be a penalty if he hits the offensive player first. But uh, that was a really good sliding play to knock that ball out of bounds. It was a very lively play from Las Lomas. They were all over it, although they did try and shoot into the body of another Clayton Valley player. Seems to be the trend <laughs> yeah, tonight. It really but does. A lot of positive plays there. Especially on those penalty kicks. <laughs> I know, especially. And some of those coming from point blank range, too. I They're going to be hurting tonight. Tough not to shy away from something like that. It's that natural reaction to try to get out of the way when you're supposed to be trying to block it. I guess at some point your body's so used to taking hits like that, you're just numb. Knight's going to keep this one in bounds here. Trying to move it up the field. Good shot. Rosenbaum, this one oh. headed, goal when Gallegos the diving save. <laughs> A little shrug like what? I'm doing my job. I think it was Rosenbaum with that uh, centering pass for Los Lomas and then headed toward Gallegos, but he was able to make the diving stop that time, and that was a beautiful play here to preserve the lead for Clayton Valley. So there's some good action right there. The Knights still frustrated being shut out here. As David Gallegos is playing a great game in goal here, and that was probably, I think, his most exciting save, certainly, yeah. of the evening. So that one did look, Brooke, for all intents and purposes, that was headed into the goal if Gallegos didn't make that diving stop. That's probably the closest direction yeah. towards the middle of the goal that we've seen tonight. 
everything else has been to the left or the top or the crossbar. <laughs> yeah, we did have that one of the crossbar. That was that was a really exciting play as well. So Los Lomas has come close a couple of times here in the half to tying this game. Boy, it looked like he put a head down and had a foot coming right at it. There's no fear right now. Here come the Knights. And mm, Clayton Valley able to thwart it pretty quickly. Clayton going to send this in. No offsides here. Ribley had it, trying to keep him from going out of bounds. Mason battling over there for it, but it's going to be off of him and a throw in up coming here for the Knights on the far side. Clayton's main goal right now is to run down maybe a little over like the last seven minutes that they have left. If they can keep Los Lomas on that side of the field to the left and make them work, make them really, really work for it, because that's all they have left for them right now, Clayton has a chance to come out on top with basically doing nothing. All right, still looking for that equalizer. Rosenbaum with a pass over here. Trying to get that in to Mason Lissy, number 19. Clayton going to send it away, and this is going to be played back to the goalie, Durer. So Durer, even giving up that one goal, he's had a, a good game in goal as well. But it's still that uh, one horror, horror mm -hmm. corner kick that's the difference in the game. Take another look at this, and there's that diving stop. Beautiful wow. save there. Off the header for Mason Lissy. And you can see Mason head down, very dejected after that uh, Gallego save. Thought he had himself the tie game. Into the sixth minute now here from Las Lomas. Clayton Valley trying to claim the championship here and put the first and only loss of the season on the Las Lomas Knights. Deerer catching this one in the air. And he'll boot it back the other way. And this one going out of bounds on the near side. And again, Nolan Martin playing that back line very well. He's been involved in a lot of the, the thwarting of opportunities for Los Lomas. Big running throw in here, headed away by Clayton Valley. This one, pass to the side, headed away by Clayton. Oh. Here's a shot, oh. and that's a goal! Count it! And we are all tied at one! Into the fifth minute, Las Lomas able to get the equalizer, and it's a 1-1 tie. Let's try to see, see that one again, and who got that goal? I believe it was number five, Maverick Wilson. Let's check it. Man, they're hyping up right now. Boy, how about that? And listen to this crowd. <laughs> Made him wait almost an hour for a goal. Yes, the cowbell and the crowd is very excited. Here it is. Take yep. another look. It is number five, Maverick Wilson with the right foot. And he's able to get it by Gallegos. And we are all tied at one. So we said there's been, Los Lomas has had some very good opportunities here, Brooke, in this second half, and they finally cashed one in. Clayton Valley now has to step it up. They have, Los Lomas now has a chance to run it back and win it all. And again, as we said, no shootouts until playoffs, so no one and wants to end this game in a tie. What a heartbreaker to end it in a tie <laughs> that after be. this season. Here come the Knights. Can they get themselves another opportunity here? Of course, the clock is going to stop here at two minutes, and then we'll have the added time up to the, the discretion of the officials as to how much time they will add. But uh, certainly late in the game now, and basically you have to say, Brooke, next goal wins. Mm -hmm. 
I do have to say, though, I do feel like Clayton Valley does play it smart. They keep most of their midline and defense in the back. So that way, when only three Las Lomas offensive players are running up, they don't have a lot of people to work with work with because they're overflown with defensive players. If more La if more Las Lomas' midline comes up with them, I feel like they would have a better chance. Well, here we got another injured player on the ground, so they're going to have to add more time to that. Kai Rosenbaum, athletic trainer. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, trying to stretch out that calf of a teammate, and you can see the blood uh, right below the knee coming down. Tense yes, this, this is a contact sport. So for Clayton Valley, they won their first 10 games. They tied Northgate on January the 5th, one to one. Then they won two in a row after that before the Los Lomas tie. Won the last five, including a 2-1 win over Akalanis. That was on Tuesday, their last game here before tonight. And we still have that injured player here on the field. This is not something you want to happen, but this does benefit Los Lomas, giving them more time to possibly get back down the field and score. Up and standing. Well, Martin is over there on the side with the ball, and looks like they're going to give him a throw in here. <laughs> now he's dribbling the ball through his legs like a basketball player. <laughs> Not much to do when you're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have hit two minutes, so the added time is in effect right now. And the officials look like they're going to get together here. And now a yellow card has been issued here, and it looks like it's been issued to Martin. And that's a warning Is that a second for warning? Nolan. I don't know, did the first one go to him? I'm not sure. I can't remember who it went to. That was the second yellow card of the night. Not sure who the first one was given to, but yellow card here for Martin, and he's walking over to the Eagle bench. Los Lomas has to take advantage of this yellow card. They now have the chance to come in, score, finish this game, and go out, go home, you know, DFAL champions. But again, it is up to the refs to see when this game ends, and it would truly be a heartbreaker to end in a tie. Here comes the Clayton throw in, ball headed back. Clayton trying to keep it in the zone. This one kicked goalward. Greer with the easy chance here, and then he falls on him. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing Gallegos doing that all night, he did it himself. Clearly it's a bet, it must work. I guess. It must do something. Seems like it would knock the wind out of me, I'll tell you that. This one coming out of bounds, crowd getting really into this now. Not exactly sure how much time is left, but we know it's not much. But right now, this game looks like it's gonna end in a tie. I do have new information. Uh-oh, here Apparently, we go. Apparently, if Las Lomas, it, if it ties, Las Lomas will win. Las Lomas, will, 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 they will have the better record, correct. They will have correct. the better record. Technically, they will be league, league champions, not win. <laughs> no, that, you are right about that, Brooke. So I think that's and why they're trying to... Out of bounds. Trying to kill time. They know this championship is theirs. Yeah, because 18-0-1 uh, for Las Lomas, 10-0-1 in league, and it is Clayton Valley who's got the two ties mm -hmm. in the league. So, yeah, technically, the uh, Knights are a half a game better right now in league than are Clayton Valley. So Got very good point there. So a tie is a win for Los Lomas. Even if it's not a 19 and one tie, right. it'll still be metaphorically the league championship right. for them. So they just gotta keep it out of their goal, keep them away a good distance, and Los Lomas has it in the bag. So Maverick Wilson with that late goal here in the second half has tied the game, and that could end up being the winner of the league championship for the Knights, this one hit. Dreer is gonna come out and make the catch. The crowd knows what's coming. He Scott. sends it ahead. Well, Sloma's obviously wanting to win this game, course, but still, yes. <laughs> they've, gotta, they've gotta know that uh, the league Ooh. championship does come with a tie game as well, and we have another body hitting the ground here. Wind knocked out of him. That looks like a hard hit. Ooh. One of those one of those players is looking a little upset at himself. Curious to see how much time we have left. I mean, we've been in the at the two-minute mark for a pretty a long while. time now. 
Oh, the students are preparing to storm the field. <laughs> <laughs> so right now a tie that favors Los Lomas. It would keep them a half a game ahead of Clayton Valley and that would give them the DFAL championship. It's all up to the refs now. And what a way to defend your championship if you're Los Lomas than to come back and win it again the next year. Especially on your senior night. <laughs> this one booted all the way down. Clayton's gonna have to chase it. Into the last precious seconds of this game. Oh. And that will do it. And Los Lomas, by virtue of a tie tonight, take the DFAL championship <laughs> for the second year in a row. And congratulations to the Los Lomas Knights. They are the 2023 DFAL champions here in men's soccer. Wow. That was a stunning game. Maverick Wilson is the reason they can call themselves the DFAL league champions right now. Maverick Wilson with that shot that got by Gallegos. And Gallegos had been playing such a great game all, all night long, shutting out this team. But Wilson able to get that goal to match the Hara goal in the 26th minute of the first half for Clayton. But the 1-1 one -one tie, given the standings here, the Knights a half game better than Clayton Valley, and they are the DFAL champions, and congratulations to Los Lomas. Congratulations. So we'll just kind of take this in a little bit <laughs> as the celebration continues on the field here for Los Lomas. And it's like, it is like they won the game. It is, basically. They just needed the tie, and that's good enough for the Knights. And they do also have to look forward to walking on their very last night, at least at home, guaranteed, before NCS this Sunday. So, so of course, they will have the uh, selection on Sunday to decide the seeding and who is going to play where. We know both these teams are in the playoffs with their fantastic seasons. And we'll just find out uh, where they're gonna be and take a look and there wow. is that goal by Wilson. Got by Gallegos. And that was the only goal scored by the Knights tonight but that is enough to claim the championship. So the Knights record goes to 19-0-1 overall, 11-0-1 in the DFAL. And Clayton Valley falls to 17 0 and 3 and 9 0 and 3 in the dfal and it is there are the victorious knights they are the 2023 champions of the dfal and for all of us here at walnut creek tv and for brooke i'm anthony schultz saying good night from walnut creek Congratulations.